Hey there, I'm Daisy Whitney reporting for Beat TV and NBC Bay Area. I am here at Google's headquarters and we're going to talk to Google's research experts about speech recognition technology, what it holds for YouTube, and what it might hold for the future. So Mike, tell us a little bit about the underlying technology that's going behind the captioning that you're able to do now on YouTube and how that works. Okay, so at Google for a number of years we've had a, a speech technology research effort and we've built a core speech recognition engine. The engine used, f the, the core underlying speech infrastructure used for YouTube captioning is the same as that used for Google Voice, voicemail transcription or for voice search. But for every different domain and application, we have a, a bunch of specific work to do to make it build the right model so it works well for that particular domain. So for YouTube, um, basically uh, modern day speech recognition systems are these huge statistical machines, which means you feed it lots and lots and lots of examples of people speaking and it learns underlying models of what are the sounds of the language, what are the words that get used and how do those words get put together and so on and so forth. And so we've trained an initial engine on actual YouTube material. The uh, initial training material actually was from broadcast news. And so, um, in general, a speech recognizer will work best when the, uh, the stuff that comes in that we want to recognize is somewhat similar to what we uh, trained it on. So the initial version of the system would work best when it's an individual speaker speaking clearly. But over time, we're going to expand that so we cover the great range and diversity of types of speech that come in on YouTube. Yeah, this is what I wanted to ask you. What particular challenges are there with YouTube given the vast array of material that comes in? Some of it is professionally produced, some of it is just user generated. Right. So you, you totally hit it on the head. It's the diversity of the material that makes this domain extremely difficult. We don't even know what kind of microphone was used. People could be in their kitchen and the kids are screaming and they're filming something and all of a sudden we need to recognize it. So. Um, there could be background music, all kinds of noise, people interrupting each other, people yelling and screaming. So, and it's also a very, very broad domain. Even if it's a single speaker giving a lecture, it may be <clears throat> about a wide diversity of subject matter and, um, you know, with all kinds of specialized jargon or who knows what. So vocabulary is difficult, noise conditions are difficult, background sounds and music make it difficult. So all of those are research areas of their own that we're pursuing and working on expanding these models to handle the diversity. So final question for you. Speech recognition is kind of an interesting technological beast. We see it portrayed in movies a lot, sort of movies of the future where everything is speech <laughs> recognition based. Are we moving towards that? I mean, we're talking long term, but do you see everything operating with this kind of technology? Well, certainly the long term goal is be totally ubiquitous. If, if it's easy for somebody to speak rather than type at a particular time, enable it. If uh, there's spoken information out there that people want to, want to be able to find or want to be able to organize or even hear translated into other languages, enable that. That's a very long term goal. But we are making significant progress. Just the release of voice search a year ago was a bit, very big step in terms of the diversity of things people might ask about and get very useful information. Thank you, Mike. Sure, thank you.